For this review guys, there will be some spoilers for the Echoes of the Eye DLC. I'm only going to show footage of content that takes place in the DLC only, so there will be no base game spoilers here, at least visually. But the Outer Wilds as a whole is best experienced with as little prior hand knowledge as possible before you jump in. The base game was my favorite game of 2019. The places the game takes you to are epic in scope, equal parts beautiful and horrifying, and if you haven't played it yet, I give the base game my full recommendation. You can say it's just a walking simulator, but it's the best damn walking simulator ever made in my opinion. I think a better term would be Explorer Simulator, and I mean Explorer in the grandest sense of the term. There are frontiers that you'd never get to experience in real life, and you feel like you're the first human to ever set eyes upon some of the things the base game contains. There's nothing quite like it out there. Now for this DLC, again there will be some spoilers here, so I will say now that if you enjoyed the base game, you will enjoy this as well, no question. I'm giving this DLC my recommendation. My only real negative about Echoes of the Eye is that it's $15 for only a single planet that's added to the game. I feel that $10 would have been a fairer price, but in its defense, I feel like the planet we do get individually has more content than the others at least. In my heart, I don't think it's a must-buy add-on. It's more of a uh, do-you-want-an-extra-scoop-of-that-yummy-ice-cream-you-were-eating kind of thing. So the last game I played that truly scared me was actually the base game, Outer Wilds. I have two phobias. One is germs, and the second is, for whatever reason, I'm scared of impossibly huge things. And I'm talking about things so huge, it doesn't even make sense. Things so gigantic, even from hundreds of miles away, they can take up your entire vision, and there's still no end to them. And Outer Wilds has plenty of the latter. But I like to challenge myself, so I treat that fear like I do when I watch horror movies. I don't close my eyes or look away. I force myself to stare at that shit head on. I'm still shitting my pants, mind you, but at least I can hold onto some pride and say I didn't look away. So when this warning message popped up when I first booted up the DLC, I got all giddy. I was like, ooh, another chance to play chicken with my fears. So I streamed this game with my headphones on, the lights off, and at night as often as I could. I figured dying of a heart attack while playing this game wouldn't be a bad way to go. Now the scariest part of the entire DLC for me was first finding the new planet called The Stranger. That giant phobia came back at me hard, man. Here's my reaction. There it is, there it is! Ooh. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Let's see if we can launch the probe on there. That thing's fucking fully black. Let's get back in the ship. Get back in the ship. Where is it? Where is it? There it is, there it is. Oh, we're losing it, we're losing it, we're losing it. Oh, hold on, hold on, okay. <sighs> okay. Okay, oh, holy crap, this is scary. Holy crap, this is scary. Holy crap. Holy crap. Jeez, what the hell happened? Where are we? Whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on? I'm on a sp- I'm hurt? Did I lose my ship? Whoa! 
Whoa, 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 whoa. What the hell? What the fuck happened? Jeez, get back in, get back in. The other horrors this DLC holds are wandering enemies. Remember how in Dark Bramble we had to deal with enemies that were attracted to sound? The enemies in here are attracted to light and sight. Once you dive deeper into the mysteries of the stranger, you enter an area shrouded in darkness. Your only light sources are coming from candles and a handheld flame encased in a lantern-like relic. The further you delve, the darker shit gets, and the paths leading to important areas you need to get to have no candles at all. So it's just you and your lantern. But whenever you bring out the light to see, you risk enemies seeing you as well. It's a very creepy game of hide and seek with these fuckers. Fuck, fucking. Holy shit! Jeez. You got me. You got me. They have their own lanterns too. Sometimes they'll light them up. But most of the time they won't and they'll wander around the darkness searching for you. Hiding from these guys, concealing your lantern light in the pitch blackness of some dark corner of a room, while you hear these guys walking around looking for you, felt like you were hiding from a murderer looking for you in your own house. Those experiences were definitely creepy, and they got three good jump scares out of me, but thankfully my fear of them went down relatively quickly because I didn't find their character models to be that scary. But I felt as a whole, the Dark Bramble in the base game was scarier than the DLC. That creepy area is on the innermost layer of the planet, but the primary layer is the most visually stunning. As far as I'm aware, this is the only proper ring planet in video games. The Halo ring worlds are now pretenders as far as I'm concerned. You can look up and see across the entire thing, and it has a river that flows through the planet so you can enjoy a turbulent water raft ride and do laps around the whole thing if you want to, all without the fear of tipping over and drowning you and your friends. Until the dam breaks, at least. Well, let's try to figure out what all this means. Oh, wait, I know, I know, I know. We need to... And what is that? What was the hell was that? Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Okay. As I said earlier, I think this is also the most densely packed individual planet in the game in terms of ground to uncover. There are so many areas, it could have been easy to forget exactly how to get to a particular place, especially in the night zone, but the level design and the environmental landmarks are well done and distinct enough to keep you from getting lost for the most part. In terms of puzzles, a lot of them have to do with following clues left behind on film reels scattered throughout the world. Apparently the race of creatures that inhabited the stranger were big movie buffs, and I'm proud to say I got through this entire DLC without having to look up at a guide. Except for this very final bridge. You have to get past these two watchtower-like defenses, but for the life of me I couldn't turn them off, or find a way around them. I thought maybe I could block the light that's illuminating the bridge with a raft above on the first layer, or maybe I could go around it somehow and jump on through from the backside, or maybe the code to shut them off is somewhere hidden that I haven't found yet, but I had no luck. Getting past this fucking bridge was literally the last thing I needed to do to complete the DLC, but I was stumped for like a good hour and a half or so. I was fucking pissed too that I had to bite the bullet and look up a YouTube playthrough and how to get past it. And when I saw the result, I wasn't as disappointed in myself as I could have been because I would have never found that solution on my own. God knows how many more hours of doing stupid shit I would have wasted otherwise. I did have to look up how to get the Ash Project to work in the base game too, so I guess I'm happy that I only needed one lookup for this as well, even though the solutions to both felt kind of convoluted anyways. But in conclusion, if I had to rate the planets in Outer Wilds as a whole, Brittle Hollow, Dark Bramble, 
and Giant's Deep are my top three, with The Stranger coming in at fourth. I guess that's why I don't feel like this DLC is a must buy, but it's still a high quality addition to an already fantastic game. <laughs>